Hi everyone, welcome to The Marathon, a show where we invite our special guests that are entrepreneurs. Today we've got Mem Rosimudini, an entrepreneur, legendary actress. Today we're going to learn a lot of things from her, you know, um, and hopefully it is going to be impactful for you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Thank you for the invite. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Awesome. Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence. Mm -hmm. It means the world to us. We get to learn from you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, how's business? Business is up and down. And I, and I have to emphasize that because that is the journey of a true entrepreneur. Um, some days you're like, yeah, all right, we got this. We got and then this. other days it's like, ah! We've got to pay the rent. Ah, we've got those bills to pay. Yes. Is the passion still there? So it's, it's always up and down. But you, the, if, you, if you're passionate enough about what you do, mm. when those rainy days come, you've already got your umbrella yes. stuffed away. You've got your raincoat waiting. Or you just go dance in the rain. And passion keeps you going. Yeah. Passion, changing passion to business. Mm. You know, like um, you have been an actress, you're a legendary actress. Mm. Changing that passion and building you know, a business that mm. adds value, not just to any individual, but to Africa, mm. impacts it in, in an African yeah. way. Your agency, there's something spectacular, yeah. but I really love it because it resembles African, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's unique than any other agents. Can you please tell us about, mm. you know, your, 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 your business? I think before even going there, you need to understand that every position that you're in, every place that you're taken to, it's all God's plan. Yes. So I was fortunate enough that I was presenting a magazine program that took me across Africa, Studio 53. Mm. And while I was there, I saw, number one, there weren't any female directors or producers on the show. Mm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to question mm. that. So I looked. But then I saw when, when I was traveling different con countries, was that there was always a gap for representation. Yes. So people started to speak to me and say, listen, can you can you put this contract together for me? Or how do I do this? Or how do I get my brand there? And so forth. And then I was doing it for friends. And then I was like, wait a minute. I'm really enjoying this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not a hobby anymore because yeah. now it's a job. It's, it's a job let, yeah. me, let me just um, put my, minds, my mind to it and then get it together. And that, that is how I formulated Waka Talent Agency. And when I, when I was, and I wanted it to be a unique agency because in South Africa we've got a lot of talent agencies yes. and we've got great ones and we've got flab and uh, ones yes. and so forth yeah. but for me at the time when I was traveling Africa South Africans did not see us as part of Africa mm. which for me and, and I was before I started traveling I was exactly the same because mm. you think oh deep dark Africa I didn't want to go yes. there I want to go to the Europe so I want to go to America's all of that which is great it's great to get that perspective but you need to understand the power that lies on this continent. continent. That's why they wanted. That's why they colonized us because mm. they knew mm, the what we have mm. here. And so I um, wrote in my friends from Studio Fifty Three. They were my first clients, and then we started getting a few jobs. And and at the time, a lot of South African advertising agencies weren't based in the respective African countries. So mm. people would call me and say, "Listen, we need a guy that sells Ghanaian." I'm like, "Well, get a get a Ghanaian guy." Um, and 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 what other people, South Africans, don't realize is that. Entertainment journeys across Africa usually start on radio. Yes. So we have access to radio studios across the continent. And then my colleagues who were trained with me as directors and producers through through MultiChoice and through Mnet, we were down in South Africa. So that's where I saw the triple effect that not only could I create the, the management style, but if we need to if we need a voiceover artist who's not based in the in the, the country of the, the PR or the advertising agency, we have a link up to studios across Studio, Africa. Yes, yes, but yes. also if you want content, we have people in, I mean, um, at, at one stage you interviewed my, my client, Brian Molondo from Uganda. He's got amazing content. Yes. We've got Chris Atu who's based in, in Ghana and, and, and Los Angeles. Mm. He's got content from that region. Yes. So, and if, and if you if you don't want our content, we have reputable producers who can produce that content yes. for you. So, and as we know, you know, moving into to mm -hmm. businesses across Africa, businesses on the global spectrum, we don't have the huge budgets. So mm -hmm. we don't have budgets to send out a production crew to, to Uganda to because Uganda, that's flights, flights, accommodation, per yeah. diem, all of that. But if you've got somebody on the ground, why not utilize, utilize that? Utilize that. Nice. Yeah. And coming up with that name, Waka uh, Agency, yeah. how did you think of that name? I wanted it to be a name that in whatever language you speak, it still sounds the same. And so I started Googling shine, talent, sparkle, 
um, Aisha kept on coming up and then I just kept on going. I was like, this isn't, this is, it isn't ringing. And then somebody who gave me a, a Swahili translation and Waka came up. Mm. And the Waka is, means shine, but the, 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 the direct translation is that when, when there's a spark of a fly that goes, of, yeah. of a fire, that last spark that goes off into the air, that is known as Waka. And so that's, that's where the name was finally born, born out of. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. awesome. And then, you know, when you started that brand, um, your company, mm. you also went through transformation. Mm. You know, like, I can, you know, from, as, a, as a producer, mm. you know, if I compare the Rose and Dini and <laughs> the now, when yeah. I see you, I see an African. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, at the same time, you're starting an agency, Walker, mm. that's an African. Yeah. So, which symbolizes African mm. and you get that image all in one. Yeah. Was that, you know, was that a strategic move? Uh, you know, as I said in the about beginning, branding yeah. and branding yourself in that way. You know, when I was starting it, and as I said, you know, God mm -hmm. puts you on journeys, and yes. ah, <laughs> God is in control whether you like it or not. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and on my personal journey, mm -hmm. like a couple of years later, yeah. was that I needed to go for a, through a personal transformation. Yes. I needed to identify wrongs within my life. I needed to identify facts of my life that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was brought up in a white Jewish home. My mother was a black and was a domestic worker. My father was a petrol attendant. So most of my life I grew up in an identity crisis. And finally in my 30s, I'm stepping into this woman and I was like, whoa, who are you? Mm. So I, I mean, during the whole phase of while Waka was growing, yes. I went through a whole existentialist ah. crisis mm -hmm. where I literally left Johannesburg, went to live in my village, Pugeng, which is, for those of you who don't know, it's about 250 kilometers outside of Johannesburg, mm. to work on the relationship with my biological parents. Yes. and to try and find me mm, yeah, and yeah. so so while both were happening and then only like like when when people when Waka was doing really well and my book was coming out I was like whoa okay wait a minute this is like all, all it's all falling together, falling together yes. you know um so yeah so that transformation has been it's been scary because mm. I've been I've, I've, I've hit rock bottom mm. I've hit rock bottom financially I've hit rock bottom spiritually um, um mentally but mm. remember when you hit that that is in the end of the final. Yes. You know, um, and 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 I and I managed to rise up because I wanted to, because I saw I was like, wait a minute, I've got I've got a talent, I've got a vision, mm. so I'm here for now. There's a reason why I'm here. Let mm. me just sort out the situation that's around me, clear the clutter yeah. out of your life, and then rise up again. Nice, nice. What, what were some of the things that you were doing? You know, because sometimes as entrepreneurs, you start a business. Mm. Um, you know, you get your first paycheck, you mm. think it's yours, unless, and then you realize it's not yours, you still have stuff to do. You mm. actually work for your stuff, yeah. you know? It's easy to get caught up in that rock bottom and you don't know how to get out of it. Mm. What were some of the traits in terms of trying to get out of it, yeah. you know? Seeing, you know, a lot of times entrepreneurs, you know, they go into depression just because there's Facebook. You know, someone is driving a, a, a G-Wagon, you know, if you're like me, you're pushing your jet and you're like, yo, I need a G-Wagon, this guy, yeah. you know, there's so much pressure that's being portrayed out there because of this social platform. Mm -hmm. And as a result, entrepreneurs sometimes they easily go into depression and they don't know how to bounce back mm -hmm. or when it's tough, you know, how did you find a way in terms of rising yeah. up there? You know, we all make mistakes. Um, and one of the things that I'm glad this mistake I didn't make was that I always kept myself small. Mm. And you keep yourself small in terms of logistics, but not in your mind. Mm. So you've got to be dreaming big all the time. Mm. So I didn't have an office for many, many years. My mm. office was my dining room table. Nice. Um, my office was, when I'm traveling, it's like my, a lot of people say, well, you're out of the country, how are you running a business? If I've got my laptop and I've got data, I'm good. Mm. You use what your resources are. Mm. Uh, in terms of getting my brand out there, I, I, I saved up money to, to get somebody to, 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 to create my logo, my website and all of that. But then I used what resources I had. What did I have? I had social media. Mm. So I would wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. So I was also writing my book from 3 to, three to 5. Mm. And then 5, 5 till about 8, 9 and just get onto social media, telling people what I'm doing, finding out what's quite happening across the continent, mm. who needs what, sending constantly, constantly. newsletters. Yes. Then I discovered that what's that monkey chimp that you can actually schedule that letter will go out. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. LinkedIn, I was LinkedIn. petrified of LinkedIn. 
the one day I spent, I must have spent about at least five to six hours mm. on, LinkedIn, on LinkedIn, trying to figure this out. Mm. Now my business has increased by 35% purely from LinkedIn contacts. Very, very powerful. So, 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 and, and I've been incredibly blessed because I've recruited, I think maybe one or two artists, but everyone else is coming to me. Mm. You know, and that is because I've put my brand out there yeah. and, and, and I've gone the extra mile. Yes. One of the things that, are, that, that, that I've um, um, failed, or rather the challenges that I've come across, is that when you go into business or something, everything is about, about human relations. Yes. Yeah. And if you have a niggling feeling about somebody and it's a negative one, listen to that intuition. Yeah. So along the line, I've partnered with people that in the beginning I'm like, ah, this guy, but that contract looks good. Mm. And then when you're down the line, it's like, ah, no wonder it looks so good because it's got like so many loopholes yes. and then there's a shark there's and then there's all. Yes. So, yeah. so human interactions are very, very important. Um, people say, you know, don't burn your bridges, but cut off ties cut off and ties. don't be afraid to. Mm. And also just on a personal aspect is that we go through different phases in our lives and we are sometimes toxic in other people's phases and other people are toxic in our phases. Mm. And we need to acknowledge that. It's hard, hurtful, because yes. two years ago I realized I was like, yo, I was the toxic one in that relationship. Okay, so they close that door, I'll respect mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But as I said, you know, everyone has a season, everyone has a phase that they go through. Mm -hmm. Go through those, but be honest to you. And also, you gotta have that vision. You know, a lot of people said to me, first of all, when I, when I was still producing, film producing, mm -hmm. a lot of, first South Africans were saying, oh, but you're just an actress, what do you know about a film? I was like, oh, okay. okay. So I partnered with guys, but mm -hmm. I mean, our first, our, our, our world premiere was at the Toronto Film Festival. Oh, nice. To date, mm -hmm. we're sitting with 15 global awards. You know, so it, if I'd listened to that person that in the thing? beginning, yeah. I would still be trying to get small roles in TV. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that. But where I am and the, and the progression the I want to make. And, and, and as black people, and especially as black women, mm. is that we're not leaving legacies, proper legacies. So for me, I don't want to, 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 to pass away tomorrow and nothing. Mm. I've, I've, I've made the choice not to have children, but I have other children within the industry. Yes. You've got to constantly leave that, that, that legacy of what you're doing and this is how you can take it on from now. Yes. You know, that you can do it. You want to become that director. You want to become that talent agency. Don't let another person pull mm. you down. Don't let a man tell you you can't do it because, because you're a woman. Don't let a white person tell you it's because you will, you're previously mm. disadvantaged. Disadvantage. You need my help. No, yeah, no, no, no. Those days are over. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, but, but, but step into, into, into mm. your phases with, with conviction. It's incredibly frightening. But if you fail, what's the worst thing you can do? You cry, you, cry. you deal with it, you pick yourself up. Mm. Inequality, mm. you know, you, touch, you mm. touched uh, certain aspects, women not mm. being given opportunities or doubting themselves. Mm. I was about to ask you in terms of inequality in our country, you know, mm. especially the creative space, you know, um, what's your take about it? Mm. You know, what you think should be the first conversation yeah. in terms of fixing that up so that women as well, as much as there's, you know, um, policies mm. that are being changed to put in women, but you find sometimes there's people behind those mm. businesses. Mm. You know, what's your take about that? You know, inequality, our mm. policy looks fantastic on paper. And the rest of the world are looking at us, great, good. Yeah. But we need to implement it on the ground. So inequality is incredibly real in South Africa. I'm going to hone in onto the, into the entertainment yeah. industry. And to start with that is that we need to re-unlearn some of the things that we that we've been brought up with. Yeah. Um, I was also I'm still I'm still learning mm. in terms of terminology we mm. use when it comes to women. Yes. Terminology we use when it comes to people speaking out on on domestic violence, gender-based violence, and so forth. Mm. We live in a patriarchal world, and there's a lot of that narrative and terminology comes from that ideology. Mm. You know, there are many organisations that are working at policy level just to change that, yeah. so that at the yeah. courts we are. Are protected yes but for an, a young person coming onto a set know what your rights are man or woman know what your rights are mm. if you don't want to take off your clothes on set you have every right to say no mm. um there are in south africa there's a there's a guild south african guilds of actors that you can join that um, if you go through some of these, these, these trials and tribulations, they can assist, assist you with it. But more importantly is that we need to reinforce the power of our voice and when somebody does speak out, we need to stand in solidarity. And with that, know the terminology. You know, um, a couple of years ago, I was on a set where uh, a young girl was asked to do a scene 
Ob, it wasn't even a bedroom scene, it was an office scene. Can you do it in your bra because we need to get our ratings up? Nonsense. You want your ratings up, write a proper script. Mm. You know, don't stop utilizing so and abusing women's women, bodies because yeah. those days are over. And we will call you out. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, your book, mm. tell me about your book. You said you yeah. wrote a book yeah. after the transformation. Mm. What's the book about? The book is called Reclaiming the Soil. Mm -hmm. And um, the title came from when I was going through my existentialist crisis when I went home. And I was walking in the backyard and it's and our village is very, very um, sandy and dusty. And it's called Rusty Dusty. Mm -hmm. And I was picked up a piece of sand and I saw tr pieces trickling through my fingers. And I, and I said to myself, I said, well, that is the part of the life that I've lost. I'll never be able to get that back. But what is here, I'm going to nurture for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And so the book is about me trying to reclaim my African identity. Um, I, I grew up in a, in a during apartheid. I was born seventy four, so it was in the midst of apartheid. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know my language. I didn't know my culture. I didn't know my tradition, and I thought that I was at an advantage. And actually, I wasn't. So in my thirties, I realised that whoa, as an African woman, am I really African? And what does it mean to be African? To be African yeah. So the story of, of the, my book is about me talking about identity crisis growing up, but then me realizing the power it is in being black, the power it is in being um, raised and born into the Buffalo King Nation. Mm. Um, and, and, and just talking about that and, and, and being truthful about my journeys of, of identity crisis. I mean, I was a young girl in my, in, my, in my early teens that used to pray to God, please can I wake up and be white? Because I thought that was the right way to be, mm. you know? Mm. Um, and we need to have these conversations. Yeah. So my hair, um, first of all, I, I mean, I took off my weave and that was like, all right, then I still still relaxed it for a while. I was like, it's still going to be a little bit straight. Yeah. Um, and then unfortunately, a very good friend of mine was, was um, uh, discovered that she had a, a rare form of cancer. And she was living in Cape Town at the time. So when she was going through a chemo, I wasn't able to go down to her. And so my gift, my Christmas gift to her was to shave my head. Um, and then once you shaved her head and I was like, okay, well, my beauty isn't validated by what's on my head. Yeah. It's here and it's here. Um, and then I was like, okay, this is much cheaper and much easier than putting on <laughs> anything else. So, I mean, even this, this is long, yeah, but I've been yeah, so busy, I haven't yeah. had time to go to my barber. But, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's all about that transformation and being, and being comfortable What's in your cool. skin, mm -hmm. being comfortable in who you are, that you don't need. I mean, I remember the times when I was in Generations that um, the hairdresser was across the road. It was in a shopping center, but there was a walkway. Um, and then the toilet was across from there. And I remember having to put my weave on and go to the toilet and literally putting glasses and a hat. God forbid somebody would see me with half a weave on. You know, and then I think back of those days and I'm like, ah, you had a problem, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and society, media, we've all preconditioned women that you've got to be this way, otherwise you're not a proper mm -hmm. woman. And we need to change that to narrative. Change that. Yeah. Um, where to for Waka agency, yeah. you know, um, where to? Waka to the world, baby! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been very, very blessed. So we have a footprint in 14 African countries. So we have Uganda, um, on East Africa, it is Rwanda, Kenya, Uganda. Mm -hmm. West Africa, we got Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, Angola, uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Lusutu. Mm. I'm missing out one, DRC. And um, we only represent TV and radio personalities, actors, brand ambassadors, speakers, entrepreneurs. And the reason why that is, is will stay that way forever is because that is what Rosie has done. Mm. Um, you know, for people, talented people out there, if you're looking for a manager, and the, the manager's never worked in a music industry, and, and you want them to, how are they going to do it? I know where I've failed, I know where I've succeeded, I know what my strengths are. Yeah. So, so that is where we are, and that's why we don't represent models and we don't represent musicians. Some of our, our talent are musicians in their own right, but then you deal with that on, yeah. your own, on your own way. So where we are now, what I did in 2016 is that I moved to Uganda because I needed to understand the East African market, mm. how East African corporate works and how East African entertainment works. And so I've obviously got much stronger ties in that country, mm -hmm. but, but from where we're going from now is to see what content we can cross over, what stories we can tell from each region, and basically creating my ultimate dream is just the, those pan-African synergies. How are you managing, mm. you know, all of your talent yeah. that are in different 
so um, um, country. So time differences do help. Yes. <laughs> um, but I do, I do have bookers. I do okay. have bookers from this side who, who assist with, with actually just going out there, doing the social media work, looking for other, mm -hmm. for other engagements. But also we help each other. So mm -hmm. we have a WhatsApp group. And so, like for instance, um, today, I mean, I had one of my artists here from, from Uganda, Brian Molondo, mm -hmm. um, telling everybody what he's doing. Already on social media, they're spreading it. Yes. Um, one of our guys from Khabaroni is starting a new show now. Other guys from Zimbabwe are spreading it for yes. them. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so we're always working, right. letting each other know um, what we're doing and what projects are doing within the Waka family, mm -hmm. and then helping promote each other out there and seeing what cross pollination yes. could possibly happen. You know, so so that is, um, and then it's 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 all about the networking. You know, I do mm -hmm. a lot of conferences, I do a lot of talks, I do a lot of traveling, and just letting people know that you know, South Africa is not the only a country in Africa. Now Nigeria, people know Nigeria and they know Kenya. Well, by the way, there's so many ah, other, other beautiful countries. countries. Yes. Yes. Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, yeah. come on. Mm. You know, Zambia, you've mm. got the Victoria Falls. Falls yeah. You've got Angola, you've got Liberia. We've also, Gabon is another mm. country which I didn't mention, which is another t territory that we're tapping into. You know, so, so let's, let's see what stories we can tell. If it's French, cool, we've got somebody who can translate. Mm. If you want to go to get into Tororo in, in Uganda, it's fine. We've got somebody who will be able to speak mm. Uganda. It's okay. We'll make a plan. And if you don't, then we'll figure it out. Mm. You know, but let's, 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 start appreciating and acknowledging the power that lies in this continent. Let's talk about the, the I know you're involved in an NPO, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, tell me about mm -hmm. your NPO yeah. that you're, you're involved so, in. So, so I've been in the gender-based violence space for also 17 mm -hmm. years. Um, I was trained through a South African organization mm -hmm. called POWER. Uh, states that started, um, which means people opposing women mm. abuse. I did my training through them, did a lot of activations, created awareness. Uh, I've sat on the board for the last 10 years with them. I've recently just resigned from the board. Um, so the gender-based violence space for me is very, very close to heart because I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor of rape and I'm a survivor of physical abuse. And so with that, I know what it means when you speak out. I know the shame that you put on yourself yes, yeah. when it happens, and that is why I speak out. Um, being in the space for 17 years, it only took me 20 years to talk about my rape. So when people say, well, why didn't you speak out, or why didn't he speak out the minute it happened, a lot of the time, society won't allow it. Yeah. You won't allow it because of what's been indoctrinated mm. in, your, in your mind. Mm. And so that has been my, my other passion, passion. That's, that's kind of like been driving me. And a lot of the time there's been a bit of overlap. I mean, I'm doing a lot of consulting within the gender-based violence mm. space because people are now, it's the latest hashtag, like, okay, this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. um, so connecting with, with, with proper speakers, yeah. what narrative are you putting out? How are you going to do it and so forth? You know, if, if another event company calls me and says, listen, we'll be doing an event for gender-based violence and we want a survivor to come on and speak about the ordeal because it's a shock tactic, I'm going to say some really unsavory words to you because we need to stop um, capitalizing on our pain and rather acknowledging it and creating solidarity around that. Mm -hmm. So that's where I am in terms of, of the GBV space. Um, I've worked with many other organizations. I was the South African ambassador for UN for the African Unite campaign where we climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, I've sat on the boards of the Tomorrow Trust, Infinite Family. I've done extensive work with Eve Ensler and um, the V-Day movement mm. and One Billion Rising. Um, I speak up in places where people are like, well, we don't want to speak up. And mm. Rosie's got that voice, so she, <laughs> and she uses it. And a lot of people don't like it, but hey, yeah. you know, yeah. and we need, we need to speak up and, 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 and talk about our truths. Yes. Yeah. How important it is as Africans to start working together? You know, your agency mm -hmm. resembles you know, Ubuntu, mm. working together. Mm. You know, we always throw this word Ubuntu, Ubuntu but yeah. we don't really practice yeah. this, you know. Mm. I think, what's your take in terms of Africans just coming together and as entrepreneurs, mm. just working together, mm. telling our own African stories, whether if you're not a creative, maybe there's something Whatever that you're lacking. Whatever story you got to You tell. bring in an accountant yeah. who can help you, who's mm. your brother, that can help you to grow your yeah. business. Because sometimes we, we always look for that person far from us, whereas the answer is just... We're going to Europe. Yeah. We'll go to Scandinavia to yes. meet somebody here. Just meet somebody, there's somebody in Kenya. In Kenya. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. please, you know, and, I, and I've said, said this so many times and I've been lambasted, but I don't care. South Africans, get over yourselves. We have this elitist thing about ourselves. And really, we are not all that. Um, we're all Africans. Uh, we, are, we all feel, we all um, intelligent. 
um, some might have higher education levels than other, but just because you come from mm. north of the Limpopo doesn't mean that you have the right to look down on somebody. Yes. You know. Yeah. So as 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 Africans, we need to break down our borders. I mean, my crazy dream is that you know to be able to, co to travel across my continent without having to get a visa into East Africa or West Africa and mm. so forth. You know, uh, we need to start to collaborate. Yeah. You know. In South Africa, South Africans have created this very, very horrible negative attitude towards Nigerians. And the minute you mention Nigeria, some South Africans are like, oh, drug dealer. And no. Mm. Yes, we have drug dealers in this country. Yes, some of them might be Nigerian, but some of them are also South African. Mm. Some might be Congolese. Some might even be European. Yes. Some might even be an Australian. So we need to move away from those narratives. So once again, what I was saying about the unlearning, mm. um, look at the brain drain that's happened in Africa. Where is it returning back to? It's not returning back to South Africa. It's returning back to the West. They're not returning back with just a job or a business. They're turning back with double PhDs. Mm. And you want to come and say a label, one nation is just being drug dealers. Come on, mm. let's wake up. You know, um, and we not we need to also start acknowledging that this is not inferior. Yeah. You know, in so many cases, they were like, well, we're bringing in you know, the white guy because he knows how to do the job. Come on, we've got brothers and sisters who can do the yeah. same thing, yeah. Yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to take ownership of what we're doing. One of the reasons why, why I started work and why now we're moving more production is because all the stuff that I produced before, I don't own. It's that big, uh, I won't mention it, but that big building there in Randburg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they own all of that content. Yeah. So we need to start owning it. So whether it's a, a fashion designer, whether it's a, your, your video, mm. a videographer, mm. um, you know, one of the things that I learned and it, and it came from, from my, after my first trip in Nigeria is that owning my brand. I mean, I am a trademark. You're not allowed to use Rosie Muthena at all, otherwise I will sue you. Mm. Um, I'm a trademark in my face. Mm. You know, I'm a business. And people need to see, it's Africans, apparent, we yeah. need to see that ourselves mm. and step into that space. And it's okay. Like, I, I'll never forget the first time when I, in, it was I think 2003 or 2004, I got a website. And people were like, ah, oh, you're all that. And I was like, yeah, actually, yeah. Because I am a brand, brand you yes, know. Yes, and so if you're going to, especially in the entertainment industry, you need to see that because mm. we're still not seen as a lucrative business. So we, do, we don't fall, in South Africa, we don't fall under the Labour Act. Mm. So we've got to keep all of these different hustles going. And in order to do that, you must make sure that somebody else isn't going to capitalise on you or your brand. Mm. You know, so as Africans, I mean, with, with my traveling across the continent, I mean, I've got family in so many different countries. You know, um, I had a bit of problems and trouble when, within Uganda. Within a couple of hours, I had somebody to stay with, I had somebody helping me out, you know, um, everywhere I've gone, mm. um, I've received a, cute, a tremendous amount of, of support, of love. Yes, territories are different to work in, but if you go live in, in, in uh, Greece, you're going to have cultural issues, you're yeah. going to have language barriers, yes. you traditional barriers and so forth. Um, women to women support, you know, your take about it, is it there? What can we do to fix that PhD? We, 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 need, we need to work on that. Um, you know, when I was starting out, there weren't women that were openly saying, okay, I will help you. Um, you've also got to you've also got to get a thick skin and go and ask for help. Mm. And my my philosophy to people is that what's the worst thing that somebody can say to you? No. Mm. And yes, people have said no. I don't want to mentor you, but some have said yes. You know, and one of my first mentors was Jenna Clifford, the jeweler from South Africa. And without her even knowing, just being in a presence of twenty minutes every couple of months did the world of good for me. Um, you know, the other saying is that show me your friends and I will show you who you are. Yes. Yes, you can keep your friends from school, whatever. But if you're sitting getting drunk with them every day or you're looking for the sugar daddy every day, every weekend with them, how far are you going to go? Mm. You know, get yourself into conferences. There's so many other mentoring factors that are out there and ask questions. questions. And there's room for all of us. Mm. Many doors have been closed by, for me by other women. And I've opened up a window, climbed through the chimney. Mm. But if you believe that you have a seat at that table, and it's not a seat to make tea or coffee, it's a seat to make proper con concrete decisions, then you pull up a chair, even if it means you have to squat for a while. Mm. And, and the reality is that it is a lot more difficult for a black woman. But do it with dignity. Go through, and when I mean to do it with dignity is that however you want to operate your life is fine. But don't do something because you think, well, if I don't do it, the man's not going to like it or I'm not going to be liked. If it goes against your values, don't do it. Mm. And you're the only one who can set your values. 
I have no right to, to make comments about your values. Mm -hmm. Just like the same as you don't have any right to make comments about mine. You know, one of the things is uh, that, that, that Jenna Clifford told me was that, you know, as women, we've always in the beginning, in the corporate, climbing the corporate ladder, women think, well, I have to do it like a man and yes. you've got the power suits, whatever, you can do that. But we hold onto something incredibly power, powerful and that's our feminine energy. So why not use that? Mm. And that feminine intellect and, and doing things your way. If you want to look gorgeous, why not walk into the, in the boardroom gorgeous? gorgeous? You don't yeah. have to adapt your outer look just to make the, the mediocre middle-aged white man feel better. No, those days are over. So claim your space um, and, and, and then speak to other like-minded people. You know, with my personal transition, I've specifically gone, in, gone into, and I know everyone hates the term, woke environments, but black only environments where I need to understand. Mm -hmm. I need to understand that I still lived a privileged life, yes. but my identity crisis is also valid. And, and when, when somebody says a, a derogatory thing to me, actually, no, I have a right to feel pain. I have a right to say, no, actually, no, I don't want you to be calling me that. Mm. And no, you can't just adapt and say, well, we'll uh, uh, make a, a joke about my flat nose or, or bum or whatever, because that is the, that is a box you want to put me into. Mm. No. You know, um, a couple last year, somebody was interviewing me and they said, you know, growing up, I was in the, the black girl in the, in the white Jewish box. Which box am I in now? And I'm like, I'm not, I don't have a box. And you're not going to put me in a box. For all my life, somebody's always wanted to, 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 to put me into this compartment. No. Figure out your own stage. If you want to step down, it's okay. It's okay. But figure out your own tune and, and figure out your own journey. So in terms of your business name, just in closing, where can people get hold of you? You know, what's, you know, if there's investors or people that want to give business to you. I usually say in this, in this, in this uh, interview or the last end of the video, it's a time where as an entrepreneur, as much as we are giving knowledge to aspiring mm. entrepreneurs as well, the business always has a need. Like yeah. you said, the business is separate from you. Personal branding yeah. and the business, two mm. separate um, things, you know, what are the needs of your agency yeah. and how can people get hold of you to build this, you know, yeah. this, this, this vision, it's an amazing vision. I well, first it. and foremost, I mean, obviously everybody wants finance, but, but we need to make finance work for both of us. Yes. Um, and so for me, it's about, it's about let's create platforms together, acknowledge Africa together. Mm. You know, there's nothing more disheartening where you get a you get a, a, a brief from a casting agency and they would say we need Nigerians, we need Angolans and we need South Africans. And then you look at the price structure and the South Africans are getting double than what the Nigerians are getting. You are getting more than you're getting less than what the, the Angolans are getting. And I'm like, how do you oh no no well it's another territory, so that's why no 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 but these are still talented people. Yes. These are still human beings that you're putting a value to. Mm -hmm. So we need to break away from that. So I'm looking for partners who see that vision. I'm not looking for colonizers. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for partners who see that vision, who are not scared and who are willing to ask those questions. And let's 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 find our challenges together. Yep. And let's tell our stories our way. So yes, the investment would be great if we can have investment in East Africa, West Africa. Let's build up a studio, let's build up a, an academy, mm. training TV presenters yeah. and actors, uh, training camera people. Um, you know, you, you spoke to my client Brian Molondo um, a, a couple of weeks ago and I mean his company that he's doing, he's not only just producing content, yeah. he's creating a legacy for yeah, other yes. people to follow suit. You know, it's about that type of vision. But let's do it on a global level. Mm. So that when they do want to come in, they need to match us, us and step onto our thrones. We are kings and queens and we've forgotten that. Yes. And now is the time for us to create our, 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 our kingdoms again. It's there. Mm. Just dust it off. Take off those, those colonial those slippers. Colonial, Let's yeah. go. Interesting. What's your definition of legacy? Woo, or what do you want to leave? Because you said you, know, yeah. you want to leave a legacy um, and already you have. Mm. But what is it that you know? hundred years from now yeah. there's gonna be a kid who's gonna be watching this mm. you know what you is know, it I that you want, want to see? I want you know equality is such a big word but it is so important and I want any African child to know that they have a place wherever they want to go I want women um, gender non-conforming people people from LGBTQI community to be able to have free roam wherever they go you know we cannot be discriminating against somebody because of their sexuality it's not a disease you know, um, 
and 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 I want us to tell our story. So my 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 legacy needs to be truthful. My legacy needs to tell our stories our way. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like below and you know comment like I always say your comment is our oxygen. It keeps us motivated to have beautiful lovely guests like Mem Rosie. You know, I hope you learned a lot from our guest today and you know your life is going to be transformed. Don't forget to follow her on all of her social platforms. She's on LinkedIn, she's on Instagram, she's on Tumblr. She also has a book, you know, uh, buy the book. Thank you so much. Peace.